Good evening and a very warm welcome to English News Package with radio and television for the hour. Making headlines, Tonga featured in the worldwide list of the top recipients of remittances as a share of cross domestic product according to World Bank's report. Tonga is now facing many impacts in the ocean and environment on how people use man-made materials daily and a 28-year-old man is currently recovering after being stabbed with a sharp object. Now with the news in details. Tonga is still fortunate to receive assistance from partnerships and donors as well as from families overseas, although we are deprived. According to the World Bank's report, Tonga is featured in the worldwide list of the top recipients of remittances as a share of cross domestic product or GDP. The World Bank states that growth is likely to remain flat in most other East Asian countries in 2022 to 2023, except for Tonga and Fiji, where it is expected to increase 5% in both years. The Minister of Finance, Honorable Dadafo Moyaki, thanked families overseas, including donor partners, for their help through remittances during Parliament deliberation today. Tonga has a good record of remittance in flows that stand to the very large share of GDP, up to 39%. The 39% are remittances from families overseas, sending money through money transfers to their families here in Tonga. As an example, the Philippines is one of the countries in the world who sends the people to many overseas countries to work and they send money back to their families. Only 9% of their remittances are sent to their country. Tonga's remittances are four times the number due to the level of families overseas to their families here in Tonga compared to other countries. I'd like to thank the Prime Minister, also the Minister of Tourism, for working collaboratively with stakeholders and I appreciate all the assistance. The World Bank's report states a good number of Pacific countries, including Tonga, have remittances in flows that stand at a very large share of GDP. In 2021, Tonga's remittance receipts measured 44% of GDP. The Environment Department of the Ministry of Medic is putting up an emphasis on the importance of keeping the environment clean and healthy while promoting community action towards the environment and the ocean. Rafona Dubola with the details. The Environment Week and World Ocean Day was aimed at involving the communities in our Environment Awareness Week with the focus on raising awareness about the ecosystem health of the lagoon. In his keynote address, the Medic Minister Honorable Boasite highlighted that this year reckoning faces multiple crises including the global pandemic and the continued crisis of climate nature and pollution. We should seize the, uh, the, uh, this opportunity, therefore, to initiate more actions, not only with the civil service, but also reaching out to the communities as well as the future custodians of our land, our children in schools, on how we can work together to revitalize and to have collective action for the ocean. By coincidence and in commemoration of World Ocean Day, it's a great honor to launch Tonga's sixth a national report to the Convention on Biological Diversity. Meanwhile, the Environment Department was planning a beach cleanup competition, a awareness program to the petrol station, and also an art competition to mark this special week. The beach cleanup competition was won by the Nahakalao group with a thousand cash prize. Sony Mafi won the drawing competition with 800 cash prize. Also, certificates to all petrol stations participated in the awareness program. The theme for this year's World Ocean Day and the Environment Week is One Earth, One Tonga. Vaifana Dobola for Radio and Television Tonga News. The Bow College is currently on strict lockdown and is out of bound for visitors due to the number of, of students who tested positive for COVID-19. As such, classroom learning will also be on hold until they receive instructions from the Health Ministry. Vaifana Dobola again with more on this story. The senior tutor of the Bow College, Reverend Doluta Fisi Hoy, says more than 60 students tested positive for COVID-19 and they are concerned with them staying in groups, so they are more alert in watching them. 
So from Saturday to Sunday, the nurses tested our students and found seven new COVID cases, making it 50, and we had daily test up to yesterday. With this surprisingly number of cases, the nurses decided it's best we release the students to isolate at their own homes and the rest will be home quarantined here until we see the situation of the virus here is satisfactory. It is important that the parents know about the situation here in school and I understand they care for their children and want to take them home, but we are trying our best to handle the situation as best we could. Reverend Fisi Hoy adds he understands the parents are concerned for their children's safety, but he hopes they will comply with the COVID-19 restrictions and instructions to avoid its spread to more students in the near future. We do not allow anyone to enter the premises. Parents are only advised to come within 20 meters to take their children's uniform and bring them new uniform and clothes, and we marked the places they could come to. We understand that mothers are very concerned for their children, especially those who are beginning high school, but we are following advice given from the Ministry of Health and to protect their families and their communities as well from spreading the virus further. So I ask the parents to please cooperate with us. However, it is not confirmed yet when the school will resume. Bye for now, Bola again for Radio and Television Tonga News. A new national strategy for the prevention of non-communicable diseases was launched by the Honourable Prime Minister, Hwagawa Meiriku, yesterday. This national strategy is for the year 2021 to 2025 to address the issue of non-communicable disease or NCDs. The national strategy is called Preserving Toa Together Through the Crisis to a Healthier Tonga. Vaifono uh, Dubola again tells you more. In his address, Prime Minister Honorable Huakav Miliku calls for public collaboration to tackle the NCT crisis in Tonga. May I remind us all that this strategy belongs to you and I. Its success is in your hands and mine. Unless there is collective commitment and investment from every Tongan, man, woman and child, from donor partners, private businesses, churches, communities, NGOs, government and leaders, we will continue to witness the unnecessary loss and huge cost due to NCTs. We cannot afford to wait another year, another month, another day. The time to act is now, and together we can get through this NCT crisis. I wish you all the strength, grace, wisdom, patience, provisions, perseverance, and unity that with blessing and guidance of God, we can reach a Tonga that is empowered, where our people get to choose wellness and enjoy long and healthy lives. I would like to leave you with a thought and a hope shared by one who is living with NCT in our community. May it inspire us in all our efforts to change the narrative for our people and the future of Tonga. The new five-year national strategy was funded by TFED, or Australia's Department of Foreign Affairs. The national strategy comes amid Tonga's known record of one of the highest rates of non-communicable diseases, or NCTs, in the world. The most well-known NCTs in Tonga are diabetes, obesity, cancer and high blood pressure. In attendance at the launching program were Her Excellency Rachel Moore, the Australian High Commissioner, Health Minister Honourable Dr. Seb Bukala, along with Police Commissioner Shane McLennan and other government CEOs and other invited guests. Vafunato Bola for Radio and Television Tonga News. It has been confirmed by the land representative for His Majesty that those resettling in Matatoa can claim ownership for the houses they are resettled in, even if the real owners are residing abroad. The resettlement is a project of His Majesty where people in Kanokpolu, whose houses were badly damaged from the January event, will get to live in Matatoa. Speaking to Radio and to Television Tonga News, His Majesty's Land Representative, Salih Sifoto, says they are currently carrying out a survey to all the houses in Kanokpolu where the owners are residing overseas to ensure data collected are in order to ensure they won't see the same situation that happened in Hapai following the resettlement after Cyclone Ian. 
We are still deciding on the issue of ownership for those who are settling in Matatoa from Kanokpolu. The only thing to remember is that this is a resettlement, not a place of evacuation. So this only applies to people from Kanokpolu at the time of the devastation. At the moment, we are carrying out a survey to identify these people as we understand there are many of them living overseas, so to avoid the same problem that happened in Hapai following Cyclone Ian. A survey was carried out to houses that were badly damaged from the tsunami and more than 60 houses were identified. For the ends, they are expecting about 100 houses that will be built in Matatoa. From the survey, we found about 70 houses and we're still processing that to register these people into their new homes because they are resettling, which means they'll be living here permanently. The decision for a name to the resettlement area will be decided on by His Majesty. However, those resettling from Kanopolu to Matatoa but they still have the right to their homes and beaches in Kanokpolo. Police have arrested a 28-year-old man from Ha'atehio and is currently detained under police custody for investigation following an incident during the weekend. The 28-year-old man of Ha'atehio is alleged for stabbing another 28-year-old male on Friday evening causing grievous bodily harm. Deputy Police Commissioner David Awaira says the incident is related to the issue of alcohol and will appear at the magistrate court at a later date. The incident occurred at a home in Hadeho where Awaira calls for the public that despite easing of COVID-19 restrictions, it is still vital to adhere with the COVID-19 restrictions during a social gathering similar to the incident. Not only that, but to avoid similar incidents from occurring in the future. The declaration of a state of emergency to all land and sea areas of Tonga has been renewed and commenced on Monday the 6th of June after last renewal on the 9th of May completed. It is clear that there is a rapid and continuous public health emergency in Tonga and that it is still necessary for emergency powers to be exercised in order to prevent or minimize risk and the loss of human lives to COVID-19 in Tonga. This renewal is according to sections 32 and 34.1 of the emergency management, also section 164 and 165 of the public health, as community transmission of COVID-19 in Tonga is still increased since February. The renewal of this declaration will complete to Monday the 4th of July at 8 p.m. unless further renewed in accordance with the law. And that concludes tonight's English news package. But before we part, here's one final look at tonight's top stories. Tonga featured in the worldwide list of the top recipients of remittances as a share of cross domestic product, according to World Bank's report. Tonga is now facing many impacts in the ocean and environment on how people use man made materials daily. And a 28 year old man is currently recovering after being stabbed with a sharp object. And that's it for tonight. Thank you for your company. I'm Ali Situpo. Have a blessed evening.